mall. Uh, so, meron na akong aatinan na event.
So that's one of the images that I created. Okay. Okay. Um, so it ended up, ended up being a really personal project for me. And it turned out becoming a visual journal of my life. And so I realized at the time, now that, you know, looking back, like when I see work that I'm happy with, they end up being visual journals of those moments in my life. So, and that's the work that I'm most satisfied with. So, I'm going to be giving you guys um, ex real concrete examples. I'll be showing some images from this body of work on where I took something really personal to me and then I transformed it into something visual. On May 19, 2012, I lost two of my nephews who were only 15 and 16 years old to a tragic car accident, okay? So I've lost both of them, and um, I, my family never experienced anything like that. I just didn't know how to process it. And so I said, I have to put that out, like all of that, all those feelings, and put it into the work. But when I was thinking about them, I didn't want it to be dark and tragic. I wanted to remember them for what made them youthful and unique. And so this image, they're all pretty stretched, but um, try and adjust your vision. Um, this is called Forever Young. And so one way of keeping it personal, aside from the concept, is that I made sure to use everything that belonged, everything in the image belonged to them, from the skateboards to the headsets. Um, those were their favorite fruits and favorite drink and their hoodie. Down to the model that I used, I chose to use my niece, who was their best friend. So, I wanted it personal on many different levels, and there's a lot more I could say. After my nephews passed away, I got pregnant, and I was like, yay, you know, something to be happy about, a glimmer of hope. And then I miscarried. And so, I was like, again, so dark, so heavy. Um, thinking about what happened to me, I just wanted it to be light. And so I came up with this image. And um, another like backstory there, I chose to use my husband's polo shirt, so that belongs to my husband. And then um, two days after I miscarried, I found out that my Lola passed away. And so uh, my Lola loved our kids, and during her wake and her funeral, a few months after my Lola passed away, my sister, the mother of my nephews, was diagnosed with stage 4 colon cancer. So, just another blow, right? Um, yeah, like now I can talk about it. I mean, it's been years, but yeah, it, it was really shocking. And um, I was so angry at the cancer, and so angry at the situation. I just kept thinking, what do cancer cells look like? I'm so you know, my energy, I was so focused on this thing I was so angry at. And so I just Googled cancer cells under a microscope or something. And then a lot of images like this kept popping up. And then I said, oh, and this is where it started, the whole fiber art and crochet for me. 
I saw it and I said, I can crochet something like that. And so I came up with this image. And so it's inspired by inspired by the cancer cells, you know, the colors and stuff. It's not like a scientific representation. It's not exact, but um, it, I took inspiration from that. And I, I and the, you know, that time I wasn't really, I didn't know a lot of stitches, just a simple single crochet. And so I said, this is all I know at the moment. I'm gonna work with this. And so I came up with, with that and I put it on my model and I, I created this image. And so I want to take, before I move on, I want to take this time to just share um, a little bit about my background in fiber art. So when I was a kid, I always loved, loved creating things with my hands. Um, glue gun was my favorite tool because it's just the easiest. I'll just like use a glue gun and craft with my mom. Uh, in high school, I learned how to crochet, but I did not enjoy it because the teacher was so strict. She was so strict about the stitches being so neat and, and uniform, and I didn't, I, I, didn't, I didn't pick it up. When I was living in the States and I was doing my photography full time, um, I was getting that itch to create with my hands again because you know how photography nowadays is digital and everything's about the equipment, it's so technical, and it's about like machines and stuff, and not really hands-on like that. So I was craving creating with my hands. And so I picked crochet. And so I was so happy that in San Francisco and LA, where I was moving back and forth, it had a really cool craft community. You know, everybody was so welcoming and so willing to teach you and so friendly. And then it really helped also that there are so many stores where you can buy all kinds of yarn, so super inspiring. So I really enjoyed, you know, crocheting on the side. And it was like therapy for me um, on the side other than my photography. But so going back to this image, this image is the first time crochet or my fiber art took center stage in my art. So it became like really the focal point. And I'm very thankful to the owner of the gallery where I showed Curious Com Comfort, um, Aveliana Art Gallery. The owner, Albert, um, Tito Albert, he said, you know, I'm getting a lot of, um, of interest and feedback with the crochet pieces because I had other, other images with crochet also. And so people keep asking about it and they want, you know, the people who bought the images and bought the work, they wanted also me to give them the actual crochet pieces they're asking for it so he said you know what after this show i want you to really explore you know really putting more of your of your crochet and and whatever other handmade stuff you do just put it in your art and so i got so excited because yay i have an excuse to to work with my hands even more and so i closed that show on a super high note it was sold out and um, I was so pumped and ready to, to crochet and to take photographs and make more artwork. Then I got pregnant. And for the moms here today, my whole world was turned upside down. I thought, you know, um, okay, after I give birth, seven months, um, I think that's enough time. I would have trained the Yaya and then I can, I had a teaching gig at a university lined up. I'll, I'll go into my teaching, I'll make my photography, my art, everything. And then little did I know God had super different plans. For um, there's so many resources here. It's so nice to see that locally there's so many venues now that teach workshops and short courses at the time. I just did it because I loved it. And I know a lot of you can relate to that here today that you do it because you love it. You take satisfaction out of, you know, making something with just your hands and simple tools, and then you say, wow, I made that in like an hour? What did you in a, What did you do in an hour? I have something to show for, right? So um, I just kept creating. And then also for me, it was like art therapy because as an artist, and then I really couldn't make art, you know, I couldn't be active in the art scene. It was therapy for me, it was my outlet to just keep my creative juices going. This is um, a tapestry weaving I did, again, with the whole idea of the cells, that, um, the cells. So it's made out of 100% um, wool roving. It's unspun wool that I 
I weaved together. And here's a close-up close up of that. 